Hey everybody, welcome back to Sweatpants BI. I wanted to do just a quick tutorial to answer a really common question that I've been getting on LinkedIn recently about my submission to the Enterprise DNA Football Players Summer Transfer Challenge that's been uh, going on recently in this month of December. So in my uh, report that I submitted, I had a lollipop visual on one of the pages. And uh, someone in the, in the Power BI community reached out to me asking how I created that lollipop visual because they had tried you know, several other methods to create one, but they really liked the way that mine looked. So they wanted to know if I used uh, you know, some kind of third party visual or if I built that visual myself. And I had to admit that no, I, I built that lollipop visual using things that are already in Power BI. So, you know, I thought that other people might have the same question. You know, maybe you're somebody who's just looking to get away from using the same old uh, vertical bar charts all the time. Uh, I know that I build a lot of bar charts. So for this contest, I literally was just trying to mix things up a little bit. And I thought that a lollipop visual might be something uh, just to break up the monotony a little bit in that report. Uh, and I managed to pull it off by just using a little bit of visual trick, trickery and the easiest DAX imaginable. So I thought that, you know, I just put together a quick 10 to 12 minute video showing you exactly what I did. So let's go ahead and hop over into the report so that I can show you how I pulled off that lollipop visual effect. So in my football players summer transfer report, the example of the lollipop visual is on the third view that I created. So it's this chart, you know, and it's obviously called a lollipop chart, you know, because we have these sticks uh, with, you know, kind of like circles, you know, I personally, I think that in this specific example, they look more like match sticks, but they are called lollipop charts because of the circle at the end of each bar. And of course, the lollipop chart is not one of the default visuals over here that's included in Power BI. So we're going to kind of cheat in order to create a lollipop visual. So if I click on this visual, you can see that what I'm using is the line and clustered column chart. You don't want to use the stacked column chart. It won't work uh, for the specific way that I'm building uh, this lollipop chart. We want to use the line and clustered column chart. So let's walk through everything that we need to do to cheat our way to a lollipop chart. I'm going to grab a line and clustered column chart. And it doesn't really matter um, what categorical data we use in our X axis. This will still work as long as we have a, uh, something in our X axis and a measure that we want to build the lollipops for. So I'm still just going to use my position uh, field. I'm going to drop that into my X axis. And then you could use player count. You know, I could use literally uh, almost any of these and it'll work just fine. But for these purposes, I'm actually going to grab player count and I'm going to drag that in to my uh, Y axis or the measure that is being applied. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just drop the title on my X axis. I'm going to punch up the font size uh, of the values in my X axis. And I'm going to um, just go ahead and turn off the title for my Y axis and do the same. Just I'm going to kind of punch up the fonts a little bit so that everything is nice and easy to read. I'm going to go ahead and change my font here to DIN, which is what I like to use for my Y axis. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a better title, such as number of players transferred by position. If you want to add a spot of color to that, no problem. Now's the time to do it. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get our lollipops. Uh, in order, because obviously if you hadn't put it together yet, the bars are what are serving as the sticks in our lollipop. So what we want is we want to have the, the lollipops appear at the top of each bar. And we're going to be using exactly the same measure to create the lollipops, but we're going to use the same measure in the Y axis, uh, category for our line uh, at, fun, or function or feature of this chart. So we're using the exact same measure for our bars and the line. 
And what we want to do is we want to clean up this line because we're not actually going to need it. And we want to turn on our markers. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the markers so that you can see what I mean. And I'm going to go ahead and make those markers much larger than they currently are. It does look like they can only go up to a certain size, maybe 20. Okay, let's go ahead and leave it at 20 for now. We can always uh, continue to mess with that a little bit more later on. And since I don't need the lines in order to create these, ma these matchsticks or lollipops, I'm just going to drop the stroke width of my line by going to the shape settings. And I'm going to drop the stroke width all the way down to zero so that the line disappears. So I've got my lollipops and I've got my sticks. The only problem is that obviously the sticks are much wider than the lollipops. So this is where we're going to have to do a little bit of cheating. But first, I'm just going to go ahead and go into my colors. I'm going to just add a touch of color to my lollipops. And now the next thing that we need to do is we're basically going to game how the clustered column chart uh, compiles the different columns that make up the clustered bar chart. And so what we're going to do is we are going to create a measure and we're going to call this uh, blank one. And this measure is not actually going to contain anything but a blank. And we're also going to create a second measure that is exactly the same thing but I'm going to call this one blank two, and it's also going to be blank. The reason that I'm using the blank function is that I don't actually want this measure to contain any data at all. I just want it to be a blank. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our column settings, and we're going to add a blank to either side of the columns in order to force that col the, the column that does appear, which is player count, to be much skinnier than it is. And so now I'm going to go into my column settings on my bar and line chart. I'm going to, you know, you can honestly let the blanks be any color that you want to. I like to just set them to whatever my background color is. I'm going to make my player count color gray. I'm going to go back to my marker settings. I'm going to update the color again, make it purple. And then if you go back to your column settings and go to spacing, you can make that inner padding, or in other words, the padding between the different columns that causes them to be wider or, or thinner. And you can just crank that all the way up. And the effect that you're left with is that the three columns that, are, that would be present for each of these values they end up being you know forced really tightly together so even though blank one and blank two don't actually contain any data they are forcing this column that does have data the player count they're crowding it you know literally shrinking it uh, into the thin bar that we would want for this kind of effect so again super super easy to create this uh, lollipop effect, the only thing that you are going to have to do is either create your own custom legend or at the very least turn off the legend on the visual so that you don't have some confusing things like blank one player count, blank two player count appearing because that is what is going on in the visual. You know, you, now you have uh, two basically fake measures that are populating your column values that are appearing over here. And then you also have the same measure in your column and line chart, which is causing player counts to appear twice over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off my legend. It's not really useful for this visual. But now we are effectively already done creating our lollipop visual. And the great thing is that this visual is totally flexible um, with how you use it. If we wanted to go ahead and just like take out position and put something else in here, let's go ahead and try country, you know, still technically works. You know, if you have a lot of values in your X axis, you can see that, you know, it gets pretty crowded here. You, we might need to shrink the size uh, of the markers that we left there, but it is technically working. So let's go ahead and try uh, just our leagues. You know, another very, very similar example where there's a lot of leagues. We'd probably have to do something like um, just showing the top 10 leagues. 
let's go ahead and grab our player count measure and drop that into the top end filter settings of the visual already looking much much better than what we had let's even see if we can get away with 25. not too bad you know we obviously now we've got 25 values in our x-axis that's a lot of crowding that is yeah forcing our column charts to be even skinnier if you wanted to you could play with the inner padding on the column settings to you know make them just a little bit more noticeable or like i said if you want to change the actual size of the marker and drop that down a little bit as well you know based on your preferences and uh and how large you're making the visual that's also something that you could do but as you can see it literally only takes a couple of dummy measures here that contain no no data whatso whatsoever to sort of create this lollipop visual effect all you have to do basically is remember that you know whatever measure you're trying to put into a lollipop chart you're going to use it in the column settings and line settings of the line and clustered column chart you're going to reduce the line that would otherwise be there to zero width just to make it disappear and once you have that stroke width set to zero the line disappears and you're just left with the markers and you can use this as just an easy alternative to a column chart you know if you find yourself just wanting to mix it up i wish that uh you know power bi had a horizontal bar and line chart that might allow you to make a, a horizontal uh, lollipop chart as, a, as opposed to just a vertical one unfortunately that's not an option this is not a, a trick that i'll be honest that i use terribly often in my reports but for some of these um you know power bi challenges that are going on uh, i thought it might be cool to, tr to try to create a lollipop visual and this uh, trick worked absolutely fine so i hope you found that useful if you've been clamoring to create a lollipop chart in Power BI, now you know a, a nice, quick, and easy way to do that without having to, like, you know, download a third-party visual or try to come up with something in Python or R. You can literally uh, create one using uh, ingredients that are already kind of baked into Power BI if you just get a little bit creative with your thinking. So thanks for tuning into Sweatpants BI. Can't wait to come up with some more, you know, fairly quick tutorials that are a little bit creative. Uh, that I use, you know, to uh, think outside the box when it comes to creating new views in Power BI. I will catch you in the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in.